Hi friends, welcome back to High Point again. In this video, we will see about Hans Robert Joss, who is popular as a reader response critic. Mm, so in the previous video we have done about the reader response criticism if you have missed that video it is available in the i button you can see that and um, if you want more uh, contents related to literary theory cultural studies and english literature in general uh, ntu gcnet jrf paper two subjects you can uh, subscribe to my channel and also press the bell icon while you subscribe so that you get a notification when we upload something here and also don't forget to visit my website uh, there too we are sharing lot of material actually anything and everything that you need to study for ntu gcnet jrf available paper two english literature available in the website one by one systematically simplified lectures are available there you can have the free trial and see what we are provided there uh, no tell me your suggestions and impressions and if you have anything to know more you can whatsapp me or call me in this number or use the instagram page to reach out to me okay i'll be very glad to share anything and you can avail the 15 percentage of off that we are sharing in the website for our student those who wanted to join our family as a student you can join the course from the website itself along with the entire audio lectures and pdf materials and also the previous and practice question papers we are giving our students free access to uh, the weekly test going on every Saturdays and also personalized study gu guidelines from our part. So we will be supporting you to achieve your goal of NTU in at JRF uh, in the upcoming session. If you want to know anything further, use this number or use the Instagram ID. Okay. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel uh, as well. Now let's see some facts related to uh, Josh's life and career. He was a German academician. So he belongs to Germany and he is notable for his work in reception theory. So remember reception theory and he is popular about it. He is notable. Joss uh, was notable for his work in reception theory, especially his concept of horizon of expectation. See horizon of expectation about this particular phrase. We have learned already in the previous video, uh, which was an introductory video about the reader response criticism, horizon of expectation. So whenever a reader is approaching a work, there will be a horizon of expectations. According to that horizon of expectation, the reader is going to read. And medieval and modern French literature, he also uh, very popular um, for his studies of medieval and modern French literature. His approach was derived from the hermeneutics of Hans George Gadamer. So his approach, his uh, major concepts that he used while reading a text, while analyzing a text and his major contributions in reader res response criticism was derived from hermeneutics of Hans George Gadamer, one of the foremost figures of reception theory. So, Joss was also one of the foremost figures of reception theory along with the other leading proponents of reception theory such as Wolfgang Eser, he established the Constance School. So, remember that Wolfgang is about him uh, about his contributions in this theory we'll learn in the next video upcoming in this lecture series now along with the leading proponents of reception theory we can see uh, Joss uh, established a school known as Constance school now uh, let's see his major concepts in literary history as a challenge to literary theory Joss challenged objectives view of both literary text and literary history, urging that the history of a work's reception by readers played an integral role in work's aesthetic status and significance. So the history, re the reader's reception by reader is important. Okay. So this point he makes in his work known as literary history as a challenge to literary theory. This is a wonderful title. And Joss challenged the objectivist view that what is the objective view of both literary text and literary history urging that the uh, you know there is there are some objective views uh, related to literary text and literary history. Both are independent. We are not viewing literary text and literary history as you know related in a in certain extent that he says that uh, literary the history of work the popularity consider the popularity of Shakespeare's work okay 
the history of a work's reception by readers played an integral role an eminent role in the work's aesthetic status and significance how shakespeare's works are so significant even today how shakespeare's work are still able to provide aesthetic quality aesthetic pleasure to the readers how it is aesthetically so superior than other works because in bringing that work into this significant status there played a major role by the acceptance by the reader how the readers received this work aesthetically so various ages various readers we can find different types of perceptions that readers have so the reception by readers in all these ages plays a integral plays an integral role in the works aesthetic status and significance that the works are enjoying today or in any other ages his insist he insists that the audience of literature does not merely play a passive or formal role indeed the historical life of the literary work is unthinkable without the active participation or participation of its addressees addressees means no implied reader or reader generally we can say that so he insists he emphasizes that the audience of literature does not merely pay, play a passive or formal role so who is watching whoever is reading that work whoever is perceiving and uh, deriving pleasure out of that work a literary piece art they play not a mere passive role in bringing about the aesthetic status and significance to a work indeed historical life of a literary work shakespeare's work survived all these ages the historical life of a literary work is unthinkable it is unimaginable un without the active participation of its addressees addressees in the sense readers so without the active without the uh, very mm, you know critical active participation of the readers any literary work or no literary work can survive the ages no literary work will have a historical life if a literary work is not well received by the uh, contemporary readers and it was ignored maybe in the upcoming generation maybe in the next or after that generations may revive this text and they will passively not passively but actively participate in making meanings out of that text and that work will emerge as a uh, as a significant text this has happened to many other works that we can see historically in our literary canon okay so the historical life of a literary work is unthinkable without the active participation of its readers or addresses literary studies have largely been confined to a closed circle of inquiry which has highlighted the process of literary production and uh, representation so actually literary studies who is uh, studying literary works it is confined it is closed and it is limited to a certain circle a closed circle of people a closed circle of inquiry which has highlighted the processes of literary production and representation so the people who are related to the literary studies it is very closed and which is highlighted the process of literary production and representation this circle must be opened up to an aesthetic of reception and influence if we are to gain a coherent understanding of literary history so this closed circle of literary studies should be opened up to everybody and it should be it should be opened up it should not be rigid or it should not be closed and it should be opened up to an aesthetic of reception and influence if we are to gain a coherent understanding of literary history so if you want to understand coherently the literary history then you should open up this closed circle of literary studies to an aesthetic of reception and of influence now a literary work jaws insist 
is not an object that stands by itself and that offers the same view to each reader in each period it is not a monument that monologically reveals its timeless essence so this is an exact quotation from one of his works jose em still emphasized that a literary work take any example any other work it is an object it is not an object that stands by itself so we often say that literary work is self contained yeah it is but never got a significance by itself the reader should read reader from all these periods all these ages of english literature or all these historical periods we cannot say that the work was received by the readers in the same way or the readers all of all these ages the different and distinct readers of all these ages read this or viewed this work in the same way in the same perceptions offered the same view to this work in the same way no the reading happened to the each readers differently in each period it read by the readers different in a different way and the according to the gender or the sta social status the perception of the readers changes even within the same period it is it varies the readers are not the same it is not a monument that monologically reveals the the literary text or a work is not a monument so what is the specialty of the monument it will be the same preserved as the same way right but reader uh, the text is not a monument that will monologically reveals its timeless essence it will become timeless no not by itself but what the readers are offering throughout the history according to that uh, it will emerge it will evolve rather literature is dialogic it is not monologic it is dialogic it exists only in the form of a dialogue between the text and the readers the dialogue is happening between text and the reader and the text will exist only in this dialogic form that will happen between the text and the reader a dialogue whose terms and assumptions are ever been modified as we pass from one generation to one ger generation of readers to the next so this dialogue between the text and the reader will change the terms and conditions the assumptions assumptions of these dialogues will change and get modified as we pass from gen one gen generation of readers to the next that's how we can read uh, hamlet by shakespeare in a different light in the light of oedipus complex in the 20th century that never happened when shakespeare created this work during the elizabethan age okay you know because the dialogue the terms and conditions and assumptions of uh, this dialogue is changing as time passes between the reader and a text as such literature is not a ob not an object or a thing but an event that it can ex exert a continued effect only if readers continue to respond to it so literature literary pieces literary text or work this is not an object it is not an even a thing but literary object sorry literary text or work literature itself is an event and literature will exist a text will exist or continue to exist or bring about effects only if reader continue to respond to it a reader reads uh, it and continue to criticize it and responds to it in various uh, ways jos uses the hermeneutical hermeneutic uh, philosophical term horizon of expectation to designate the framework of expectations and assumptions that bring the worlds of reader and author together in the constitution and interpretation of text so there is a horizon of expectation that in that horizon we can see the expectation and assumptions that brings the worlds of reader and writer together so while a reader is reading a text there are some expectation and assumptions happening so the expectation and assumptions of in this world of reading a text of reader and the author bring together in horizon of expectation the coherence of literature as an event is primarily mediated in the horizon of expectation so where this uh, coherence literature this uh, happening it is happening in horizon of expectations 
of the literary horizon expectation of the literary experience of contemporary and later readers later readers critics and others in this horizon of expectations see when we read about shakespeare we will we are already we will read or we are aware about whatever the readings provided in all these ages in historically how this work was looked upon right so in this horizon of expectations the literary experience of the previous readers are there the contemporary readers experiences are there the critics and others all these things are uh, all these uh, their experiences and assumption expectations are there in the horizon of expectations now that's all about the concepts related to jaws major concepts related to reader response theory now let's see the key text provided by jaws aesthetic experience and literary hermeneutics published in 1982 towards an aesthetic reception in 1982 question and answer forms of dialogic understanding came out in 1989 which does was Where's ten hens? I don't know the correct pronunciation. Published in nineteen ninety four. Pause the video and read the titles again and again, and also try to remember the uh, titles that are mentioned while we are discussing the major concepts by Jaws. Okay. Now, that's all about uh, Jaws, uh, the major critic of reader response criticism. Uh, I hope this was clear to you. If you have any doubts, don't forget to mention that in the comment section. And also follow me on Instagram and use this WhatsApp number to reach out to me. Don't forget to do visit my website. The link to the website is there in the uh, description box. You can click it and go directly to the, my website and have the free trial and see if you are interested. You can join the course from the website itself, or if you want to know the free bonuses that we are sharing for our students, you can use this number. Okay, don't wait for the next notification to come. Start learning from today itself. That's all about it. Meet you in the next video. Until then, stay tuned to High Point and be happy, guys, and strive for your best for your next NTU GC Net JRF English Language and Literature exam. Ta ta, bye bye.